going on, Vikings fans? Welcome in the Vikings Now by Chad Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman. Coming up on today's show, I wanted to go over five realistic moves that I could see GM Quasi Adolfo Mensa pulling off before Vikings training camp gets started on July 27th. But before we dive into that, I got some good news and I got some bad news. So I was taking a look at the most subscribers gained throughout all all of chat sports we have over 30 different channels and i was looking at which channels picked up the most subs this month congratulations vikings fans we are actually in second in the entire company so shout out to all of you guys and thank you so much bad news being eagles now is at 824 subs nothing would make me happier if i could stick it to all of eagles nation and somehow beat them in the most subs gained this month it is right now june 25th so we have a couple days Lock us in as you go to Vikings YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. But my first realistic move I could see the Vikings making, and this would be a blockbuster, and this would be, you know, if I had to choose one move that I could see this front office uh, making, it would be the signing Stefan Gilmore, the veteran cornerback, former defensive player of the year, as he would be a much-needed addition to this Vikings cornerback room. Now, you know, I have said this countless times, I like this room. I don't love it by any means. I think you got a bunch of good young talent, that, you know, if they do take that jump and they take that next step, this could actually be a very good room, you know, compared to the rest of the league. But I like a Kale Bevins, I like Makai Blackman, and I like Kyrie Jackson, our fourth-round pick. Do I love any of these guys? You know, no, not really, because they haven't proven it just yet. I like the addition of Shaq Griffin. I think he's a great rotational corner, and apparently he's been great throughout Vikings minicamp and OTAs. Byron Murphy, uh, he was, you know, reported that, you know, taking a step up this uh, upcoming year. He looks great in mini camp, so hopefully he can truly form into being a quarterback one. But there's no doubt about it that, you know, Stephon Gilmore would walk in here and compete for being the best cornerback even at the age he is. He was still fantastic for the Cowboys this last season. 17 games played, did not miss any time, had 13 pass breakups, two interceptions, only allowed a completion percentage of 549 when other quarterbacks were targeting him. And my take on Gilmore, he would not only be a huge addition on the field for all the reasons we just mentioned, but the off-the-field benefits for Gilmore would be massive. Just to have that uh, you know, other veteran player, member of the secondary, secondary, you know, be in the ear of Evans, of Blackman, you know, of Kyrie Jackson. And if you had Gilmore and Harrison Smith and Brian Flores. Flores, the amount of tutelage you would have on that defense and just experience, I think it would just overall create a better atmosphere and a better defense overall for Minnesota. So if I had to pick one move for this front office to make, give me Stefan Gilmore. You got $26 million still to spend. Might as well do so. But another way you could spend that uh, $26 million is signing the big fella, Christian Darisaw, to an extension. He is extension eligible this summer and you know we've heard a bunch of different dollar figures of um, how much you could potentially make on an average annual basis but Ryan Fowler a uh, pretty tapped in NFL insider says Darisol's likely average per year will land around 28 million dollars which if he signs a deal for 28 million dollars a year he would be tied for the highest paid tackle in the league with uh, division rival Penny Sewell for the um, Detroit Lions so Darisol does he deserve that does he deserve to be paid like one of the highest paid you know, left tackles in the league, I think so 100%. And these are his numbers from this past season. When you could consider this, you know, a down year for Christian Darisaw in terms of the PFF grade um, and just overall sacks allowed and pressures allowed. But this past season, played in 15 games, did uh, miss a couple of games due to the injury, but had an overall grade of 82.4, run block at 73.9, pass block at 85.3, had an overall grade like I said, of 82.4, which was down eight points from 2022, where he did have a grade of 90.3, allowed six sacks, has allowed only 16 throughout three years, allowed this past season 31 pressures, the most of his career by uh, at least nine. So he's given up 73 pressures total throughout his career. And, you know, it gets me this. If I were the Vikings, I would extend, or I would ex extend him. I just combined, or combined, extended, and signed. No, I would extend him before the season starts. There is no reason to wait on this deal. You know, I don't think there's any situation where we're looking at Christian Darisaw differently after this season unless he has, like, an all-pro level year, and then we're calling him the best left tackle in football. But if that's the case, then you're going to have to pay him $30-plus million 
per year more likely than not. So I say get this deal done, even if you do have to, you know, let's just say it does come out where Darisaw signs a four for, you know, whatever it may be on $28 million a year. You know, that may look like an overpay, but let's just say Darisaw goes out and earns it, and I think he will. So that's what I would do. I'll extend him before training camp gets underway. Now, I put figure out wide receiver three as a realistic move for the Vikings. I'm not saying figure out who for sure is going to be wide receiver three, but figure out who is going to be competing. Because, you know, looking at the room right now, Brandon Powell, he'll be in competition. Jalen Naylor, we talked about on yesterday's show about how Kevin O'Connell and other members of the Vikings coaching staff want him to step up as that wide receiver three option for Minnesota. You got Trent Sherfield, the more run blocking, you know, archetype of wide receiver. So you got those three guys. I think they will for sure all be competing for it. But what if you go sign another player? What if you go sign a guy like Hunter Renfro, where, you know, prototypical slot can, you know, create separation in a phone booth. And if you match up a linebacker and opposing teams, you know, third cornerback on him, I mean, good luck. He'll create separation no matter what. And plus, he's still 28 years old, and he's been kind of, you know, weeded his way out of Las Vegas, where he hasn't really had the opportunity, you know, to be a legitimate wide receiver in the league since Devontae Adams got there. They drafted Trey Tucker like they don't have a need for Renfro, but a couple years ago when Derek Carr was there and they were calling this guy third in Renfro, he was one of the more valuable wide receivers in the entire league. Now, let's just say you want to go big time. You want to get a big time name in there. I mean, Michael Thomas, Vikings killer, is still out there on the market, and, you know, he is nowhere near the player he once was, you know, this past season. You know, we went over 440 yards, and, you know, he does have an injury history. He's 31 years old, but if you're telling me, if you're an opposing defense, and you see the three wide receivers roll out of Jefferson, Addison, Michael Thomas. You got Aaron Jones in the backfield. You got TJ Hawkinson at tight end. I mean, good luck matching up with that group. It's almost a pick your poison situation if they would go sign MT. The question does become, would Michael Thomas want to come to Minnesota and play a wide receiver three role? I'm going to lean no. I could see him signing with a team like the Chargers so he just could, you know, just get more out opportunity. But you know, maybe the Vikings throw him one year, $8 million, and just say, hey, we'll create the best wide receiver group and overall just best group of weapons in the entire National Football League. Talk about bringing home a legend here. I, I had to throw this on here. Um, you know, this would be a cheaper option, but signing Linval Joseph, uh, journeyman of the NFL nowadays, Super Bowl champ with the New York Giants, and he actually still lives in Minnesota, so I could see him, you know, having a want to come back and play for the Vikings. But, you know, he hasn't been the most productive over the past couple of years. You know, he was with the Eagles in 2022, was with the Chargers this past season, and just hasn't really gotten an opportunity, you know, to play too often. And that's just due to his age and his, you know, his lack of you know, production when he is out there on the football field. But let's just say you bring him in on a one-year, $1 million deal or whatever the vet minimum is right now. I mean, I would do it because the Vikings – you know, then the interior of their defensive line, like I like Jerry Tillery. You know, you still got Jonathan Bullard and, you know, Harrison Phillips, and they're, you know, decent options at that D-tackle spot. But why not just add more depth? Why not just, you know, add a guy who is familiar with the city, familiar with the fan base, and I think could overall just be a spark plug for, you know, what about a guy like Harrison Smith? I'm sure he would love to see, you know, big hungry walk back through, you know, those doors. So if I had to make the call, bring them back. I don't see any reason not to. You know, with still a big need at defensive uh, line, you know, I could really see the Vikings making this move. But maybe you're in the other camp. Maybe you say, like, oh, I want to see a guy like Weavi, you know, Drake Rodriguez make the roster over him or have one of these young guys, you know, for he doesn't take a spot away from him and they can actually be on the final 53. So you guys let me know. Would you sign Linval Joseph? Give me an S for sign or a P for pass. I say I would do it, but I can totally understand if you just think, like, you know, get out of your feelings. You know, think about, you know, the actual on-the-field production. So I could see why you guys may be typing your P for pass. My last move that I would make about the Vikings is just name Will Riker the starter. Um, he's been fantastic. And the reports we're hearing from OTAs, minicamp, is that he is living up to the hype of being a kicker drafted this past season. And Kevin Seifert of ESPN is at all the Vikings practices. He has just been raving about the rookie he said the remainder of rookie Will Riker's efforts came during positional drills without a defense pressuring him and sometimes without even a snap. But he still managed to put on a display that confirms, if nothing else, he has the leg to kick in the NFL for a long time. He carried on to say during the team's final OTA, which was moved indoors because of rain, Riker nearly hit a balcony that is perched on the wall 
behind and above the goalpost while moving through a progression of 40 plus yard attempts. Later, in a full drill with a defense, he drilled a 60 yarder that landed in a net that sits 10 feet behind the goalpost and 10 feet off the ground. And Will Riker, I hope you're the man to cure this kicking curse for Minnesota. You know, whether it's Blair Walsh or, you know, Dan Bailey, Greg Joseph, like, I feel like the Vikings have been screwed by kickers more than any other team in the NFL. Maybe Bears fans disagree with me, but hopefully he's the answer. Um, now, I don't really think John Parker Romo will offer too much competition. So if I'm the Vikings, I just name him the starting kicker right now. You know, give him that confidence, show him your backing and just belief that you think he can be the franchise here in Minnesota. But I just gave you guys five moves that I would make before Vikings training camp got underway uh, or gets underway July 27th. But you guys let me know. Name one more move the Vikings need to make before training camp. Curious to see what you guys got to say down below. And as always, guys, give me a follow on Twitter. That's the handle right there, at Pat Seeps. If you guys do so, I'll give you guys a follow back. But I just want to say thank you so much for watching the you know channel over the past couple of weeks. Support's been uh, great. So seriously, thank you guys so much. Make sure you are subscribed. And we'll see you guys next time. Let's go Vikings.